January the 7th, 2013, sees the fourth meeting of the EDSAC project trustees. And what are we going to see here today? We're going to see some chassis. We're going to see um, chassis being manufactured, um, CAD and raw sheet metal going in at one end, and um, laser cut, folded, drilled chassis sections coming out at the other end. They're meeting behind the workshops of this small high-tech manufacturing company just a few miles from Cambridge. It's here the all-important chassis which hold the valves and other components are being manufactured. It's a milestone in the project and one that wouldn't be possible without generous financial sponsorship. The trustees represent the various bodies with an interest in the reconstruction work. Uh, I'm Herman Hauser, I'm chairman of the EDSEC board and represent the Hauser Rask Foundation. Uh, I'm Peter Robinson, I'm one of the university nominees on the, on the board and my particular interest in the project is that uh, my father attended the summer school in Cambridge in 1951 and I was born a year later so I've been interested in EDSAC since birth. I'm Andrew Herbert, I'm the project manager and I also represent the Hauser Rasp Foundation as a trustee. Obviously my job is to make sure the project builds the replica and delivers it on time. So I'm Andy Hopper. I'm a trustee representing the University of Cambridge and I'm also head of the computer lab. Uh, I'm David Hartley. Um, I represent uh, the British Computer Society on this board of trustees. Uh, I have been around in Cambridge for a long time but currently I'm uh, museum director at the National Museum of Computing where the EDSAC replica will go. My name is Kevin Morrell um, and I represent the British Computer Society on the board. My role is to make the notes and look after the pennies. Today, Andrew Herbert reports on progress. One issue is getting components made which aren't available commercially anymore. We were working with a local company who had a winding machine, but they just couldn't produce coils to the dimensions we needed. So uh, Mike Barker um, is able to make coils for us, and we have a, a bulk order in. Some of the team are making things in their own garden sheds. I'm up to speed with making the formers. Um, Chris Burton has assembled a few, and they're behaving perfectly. So At last, the logical design has finally been worked out. We, we are confident that what we are building will work at logical level to produce... At logical a, level down to what? Um, we're operating at the gate level right. in the logical simulation okay. with some understanding of signal attenuation and delay. So, yes, we have a complete logical design. We know what the circuits have to achieve electrically. And the store design is pretty much there. We're just waiting for chassis. Peter Lennington is still um, working on nickel delay lines as a substitute for, um, for mercury. He can now send data and get it back, which is a significant improvement. Um, David, as director, invited Jill Clark to start thinking about the large systems gallery, where we'll end up, how the space is arranged, what EDSAC's needs are. That's where we are on progress. So it's, it's, it's going forward very nicely. EDSAC was the brainchild of Morris Wilkes, head of what was then called the Cambridge Mathematical Laboratory. It's long gone, but one part of it survives in today's computer science department, run by EDSAC trustee, Andy Hopper. Well, this is the green door that was the entrance to the mathematical laboratory, as the department was called at that time. And I guess all the people who constructed the machine at SAC walked in through this door. These are people who have retired. And if you ever worked behind this door, when you retire, you're shown the door. And literally, we have a little ceremony. This is picked up, and the person who is retiring is shown the door and we all wave goodbye and shed a tear. And what's the first name on the plaque? Morris Wilkes, 22nd July 1980, so that's when he retired. We say it was the first stored program computer which went into regular service in Cambridge in 1949. EDSAC was used for about nine years. Two of the trustees have personal reasons for wanting to see it rebuilt. I joined the laboratory uh, that year when EDSAC was thrown away. Uh, I was a student and then a research student and then eventually I became director of the service in 1970. Well, the first time I heard about um, EDSAC is when I did my PhD here and I used the uh, mathematical laboratory, as it was then called, to do some Fortran programming. And people just remembered the EDSAC with great fondness because it was, uh, they were very proud that it was the first usable computer in the world. And of course, Morris was uh, still head of the 
uh, mathematical laboratory at the time, and he was the person who uh, invented and first built it. Uh, it all happened two years, two, two, nearly three years ago, when I met Herman Hauser in Cambridge, and he was asking about the work I was doing in the Computer Conservation Society. And he said, has anyone ever rebuilt EDSAC? And I finally talked to David Hartley and said, oh, you know, how much would it cost to actually uh, rebuild the EDSAC? I said, I've got no idea at all. No one ever thought of doing it because we all thought it was impossible. Oh, he said, why don't you find out and let me know? And that's an incredible invitation for funding than I've ever seen before or since. And he said, well, I don't know, but I'll find out. And uh, because he's associated with the uh, computer, uh, uh, the British Computer Society, he knew the right people. So we spent six months, a team of us from the Computer Conservation Society, particularly Chris Burton, and started to do the research. We went to the archives, we dug out all we could find to find out what would it cost to answer Herman's question. And the answer we came up with after six months was it would take three years to do and cost a quarter million pounds. Well, I was the first uh, funder of it, but I soon got a, a group of people together who helped me fund it.